Hello guys, welcome back to the CCNA routing and switching video series brought to you by ABY Design and Tech. In this video, we're going to have a look at the Cisco Commander interface, Cisco iOS, and try to understand these terms. Okay, so to begin with, what is Cisco iOS? So Cisco iOS, that stands for um, Cisco Internetwork Operating System. So essentially, all it is, is just the operating system which runs on your Cisco router or switch. Okay, more specifically, your, your Catalyst switch or your Catalyst router. So the core function of the Cisco iOS is to perform the function of a router or switch. So it's to facilitate communication between data nodes, either switch frames or root packets. So um, just like how um, your computer or your laptop runs a Windows operating system or a, a Linux based operating system, the core function of the operating system is obviously to allow you to interact with your machine. However, it comes with um, other features um, which you can use and make use of. Essentially, it's the same thing with Cisco iOS. Obviously, Cisco iOS, the core services are to perform routing or switching. However, there are other features and services which we can enable on our devices, such as encryption, authentication. We can enable firewall capabilities as well. Um, we can enable QoS. So there's a whole bunch of features which Cisco iOS allows us to enable on our Cisco devices. But at its core, it's going to either support, or at, at the bare minimum, support switching of frames or routing of packets. And obviously, as network engineers, our job is to then configure our network devices, enable these features, so we can facilitate network communication. And so it's important to understand that there are many versions of Cisco iOS. And like with a Windows operating system or a Linux-based operating system, um, the newer versions are going to have more features, okay? They're going to be slicker, faster, etc. That works the same, well, the same principle works with Cisco iOS. Um, the latest version is 15 or something. I think it's fifteen point. I think it's fifteen point eight, and essentially each newer version or each newer release of the Cisco iOS brings us more features, fixes bugs from previous uh, software versions, etc. And the Cisco iOS is stored in flash memory, so every time the root or switch boots up, it's going to load the operating system onto the device. Now let's have a look at Cisco CLI, which is, stands for Cisco Command Line Interface. So all the Cisco CLI is, it's a command line interface, which acts as a user interface, allowing us to interact and configure our network devices. So just how with a Windows operating system or a Linux based operating system, we're given a GUI. A GUI allows us to interact with our device. The Cisco, instead of giving us a GUI, it gives us a command line interface. So whenever we open up a terminal emula emulator program, and once we have connectivity either via the serial port or via um, SSH or to us to our Cisco device, we will be presented with a command line interface. This allows us to send commands to our Cisco device to enable features and configure the device. Now, it's important to understand that as well as a command line interface, all Cisco devices come with a GUI. Now, the GUI for your router or switch is going to be very, very bad, okay? It's terrible, it doesn't have as many features um, as the command line interface. So whenever we're configuring switches or routers, it's also recommended that we use the command line interface because it's easy to, to navigate, the commands are pretty simple and it, it gives us access to all features. Now, certain Cisco devices like the the Cisco ASA, you've got the um, wireless LAN controller, um, you have like, the, the wireless access point as well. Certain Cisco devices, the web GUI is actually going to be better to use than the command line interface. The reason why is because those devices were cr created in mind that a GUI is going to be used. So the GUI is better. It's got more features than, let's say, the GUI off a router or switch. However, the command line access is still available for those devices as, as well. So to access the GUI, you would browse to the IP address or the management IP address of the, of the Cisco device via your web browser. Um, to access the CLI, you would either use a terminal emulator program like SS, like um, PuTTY, um, TerraTerm, and you would SSH, Talner, or Serial Connect to that device so that you can access the command line interface of that device. So now because we're going to be working with the Cisco CLI a lot, especially in the CCNA series as we're configuring routers and switches, let's start to understand a bit more about how to navigate the Cisco command line interface, okay? So the, when you first sign in or connect to a, to a Cisco device, the first mode that you're presented in is going to be user mode, okay? So user mode is the first mode that you enter when you connect to a Cisco device, a router or switch, and it's identified by the greater than prompt. Now this mode is very, very limited. Essentially, you can't really do much to a few commands. You can't do any configuration. You can't do any troubleshooting. Maybe a tiny bit of monitoring, maybe checking the version, etc., of the device, but you can't really do much more. Okay, so it's very, very limited. 
you will be working in this mode a lot. Now, the next mode up is called Privilege Mode, okay? So with Privilege Mode, it allows us to do monitoring and troubleshooting of our Cisco device. We can view the configuration of switches and routers, but we can't make any configuration changes, okay? Now we can enter Privilege Mode by typing in the Enable command, okay? So we're in User Mode, we type in Enable command, so just enable and then we're brought to privilege mode. And this mode, like I said before, is used for troubleshooting and it's identified by the hash prompt. So privilege mode, we will be spending quite a bit of time in privilege mode, especially when we're going to be troubleshooting or checking the configuration of our Cisco device. Essentially, when you're troubleshooting it and you're monitoring, you're going to be checking the configuration, make sure everything is configured correctly, that you haven't missed anything out, and also checking your debug commands to see um, how that uh, how the switch or how the router is handling certain or different types of traffic. Now, the next mode up from that is going to be global config mode, okay? And this, this allows us to enter global commands which affect the configuration of the switch or the router. So once we're in global config mode, that is when we can actually start making configuration changes to our Cisco device. And we enter global configuration mode by using the config terminal command or the configure terminal command. And it's identified by the config in brackets and then the hash sign at the end. So that's the prompt which recognizes that you're in configuration terminal mode or global config mode. Again, we can configure things such as IP default gateway. Uh, we can also configure host name, enable secrets, enable passwords, usernames and passwords, etc. All that can be done from global config mode. And we can also enable features globally from that mode as well. So, uh, 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 as an example, we can enable AAA from that mode, which allows us for authentication, authorization and accounting services to be enabled on our Cisco devices. So once we get into global config mode, that's when we can actually start making some changes, okay? So the two modes that we're gonna be really balancing between are gonna be privilege mode and global config mode. Because obviously privilege mode, we, we can troubleshoot, we can monitor. Global config mode, we can actually make changes, okay? Now, within global config mode, there are what we call sub-configuration modes within the switch or the router. Essentially, these sub-configuration modes, they allow us to configure or set the configuration for a particular feature within our Cisco switch or router. As an example, we can, from global config mode, we can enter interface mode, okay? And essentially, with interface mode, any configuration we apply under this mode applies specifically to the interface of a switch or of a router. And it's identified by the config-if um, in brackets as well as the hash prompt. And again, we can enter this mode by typing in interface and then the name of the interface, okay? Another sub configuration mode that we can access from global configuration mode is gonna be router mode. This allows us to configure um, commands which relate to the routing protocol. So OSPF, EIGRP, RIP, these sort of routing protocols, any commands we enter under, the, under this mode will apply specifically to that routing protocol. And there are also uh, uh, many other modes that we can enter from global config mode, but we'll talk about this later in the series. So it's important to understand is that we start off in user mode. We enter the command enable, we can move to privilege mode. Privilege mode, we can do a lot of show commands, we can monitor, we can troubleshoot. They can check the configuration. Then, if, if you want to make any changes, we have we, we have to move from privilege mode into global configuration mode. Okay, now from there, once we're in global conf configuration mode, then we can start making changes or making or entering commands which affect the switch uh, affect the switch or, or router globally, like host name, IP default gateway, etc. However, in order to navigate to these sub configuration modes, we have to first be in global configuration mode. So once we're in there, then we can navigate to these other sub-configuration modes, which allow us to enter commands which apply specifically to certain features. And so this kind of like diagram just shows how you can navigate between the modes, okay? So imagine from here, moving from left to right, our device boots up, okay? Now if our device doesn't have any configuration at all, and if it can't load any configuration because there's, there's no configuration on it, essentially the way they work, as you configure a device, it's gonna save the configuration to a file. And that file is loaded up every time that router or switch boots up. So if there is no configuration file, it's going to go into something called setup mode, okay? Now setup mode, we don't usually follow setup mode. Essentially what setup mode is, is kind of like a, a mode which guides you through doing the best configuration for a Cisco device. We never ever follow that and there's a way to exit that. So we don't want to go through setup mode. You can if you want to, but there isn't any point. So once we're in user mode, okay? And that's, that's the first mode that we hit whenever our device boots up. Then to navigate to privilege mode, we enter enable. If for whatever reason we wanted to navigate from privilege mode back down to user mode, then we can use the disable command. 
If we want to navigate from privilege mode to global configuration mode, we'll use the configure terminal command. If you wanted to go from global configuration mode back down to privilege mode, so we can do some troubleshooting, some debug commands, we would enter the exit or end commands, okay? And then it's from global configuration mode, then we can enter the sub configuration modes, which applies specifically to certain features. As an example, we can access our VTY lines, okay? So in line mode, we can enter commands which apply specifically to the, to the VTY lines. As an example, so the, the VTY lines, they are virtual lines which allow us to manage SSH or terminal connections in, into the switch. We can actually enter commands which apply to, to the console port as well in line mode. If you wanted to enter router mode, then we can enter a command like router OSPF. Again, once we enter router OSPF, it means that any commands we enter apply specifically to the OSPF protocol. We can also um, enter, um, okay, so interface mode, we would use the command interface. Again, this is just a small mistake that I, I've made. Um, however, there's also something called access list mode. So with access list mode, an, an access list is, uh, is is just a list with, to allow or deny certain types of traffic. We can enter into that mode by, by using the access list command. If you want to enter into interface mode, obviously we would use the interface command. Okay, and then what's pretty cool is that, so from these sub configuration modes, if you want to go back down a level. So let's say I'm in line mode. I, I wanted to move back to global configuration mode. All I have to do is use the exit command. If I wanted to move from the, a, a sub configuration mode all the way back down to privilege mode, I will just use the end command. Or you can also use the keyboard shortcut of Control Z. So that brings you back down to privilege mode. So as an example, maybe you've configured um, some OSPF configuration and then you want to verify it, you would use end or control Z, move back down to privilege mode and then enter the necessary show command to look at the OSPF configuration. And so let's have a look at some, some tricks and hints that um, you can use when navigating the, 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 the Cisco CLI to make it easier. Okay, so of course, when we enter commands, we literally just press the enter keyword or the return key to actually send those commands to the Cisco device, okay? Now, what's also pretty cool is that we can use the tab key to finish commands if we've typed in enough of the commands. As example, let's say we're typing in config terminal. If we type in C-O-N-F and then press tab, that will finish that the first keyword for that configure terminal command. So we would have configure. We can also use the question mark to list the commands available to us in any mode. So as an example, we can list in privilege mode, we can use question mark to see all the commands available to us. And also, we can also list the commands which begin with us with certain letters by using the question mark as well. So let's say I want to see a show command, I can enter SH, press question mark, that will show all the commands which begin with the letters SH, as well as a description of what those commands will do. And of course, we can use the control Z to bring us out of any configuration mode and back into privilege mode, okay? And we can also accomplish the same task with end. So to be fair, that was that's all there is to it. Cisco IOS is just an operating system running on, on your Cisco device. CLI is a user interface that we can use to interact with a Cisco device and send commands and configure and monitor that Cisco device. In the next video, we're actually going to start to get our hands on with the Cisco equipment. We're going to look at the base configuration for a Cisco switch. So this is going to be the configuration that I do on every switch, no matter whether it's a lab switch or it's a corporate switch. The configuration that I put on every switch when it's fresh out, out the box. Again, if you like this content, then please subscribe to my channel. If you, want to, if you find this video useful, then please share so that we can get high quality IT training to the masses free of charge. Thank you very much.